What I am about to tell you is an incredible story, a saga of the most unbelievable journey into times and places only imagined by most men, but I, for one, believe it to be absolute truth, for I knew personally the man who lived this fantastic adventure. He was a young man then, 20 years. It was 1877, the year of the promise, the promise of his father to take him to sea. It seemed that young Olaf had waited all of his life for just this day. Jens Jansen, a tall and rugged seafaring trader in the true Nordic tradition, had returned home with a load of ivory. And now his son Olaf would be allowed to accompany him to the marketplace to trade the ivory for gold. From there, the two would travel on to Franz Joseph land to barter and trade again. It was hoped that before the ship returned to their homeland under the watchful eye of Jens, young Olaf would become a seaman. So it was that father and son said their goodbyes to home and family and set upon their most incredible journey. until finally their small boat began threading its way through massive icebergs as tall as skyscrapers. ceased and the raging sea quieted, the two sailors found their compass, supplies, and most importantly, casks of water had been washed overboard. To make matters worse, the sea had completely stilled. Not even a light breeze blew. Young Olaf, bruised and battered by the storm, became even more frightened by the after calm. Yeah. 
what shall we do when you face the highest wall? Never give in. Turn around and it will fall. If you never give in It may break your heart When your world falls apart But if you believe you shall receive Peace will fill your heart When your hope And courage fail Never give in A warm wind Will fill yourself if you never give in. Clouds may hide the sunlight. Tomorrow they'll blow away. So be strong. It won't be long For God will light the way And hopeless Though it seems If you believe In all your dreams And have faith miracle of fresh water was in their prayers that evening, and they awoke the next morning to the sound of seagulls. Food. God was with them. Do you see what I see? In the horizon, glow 
lost like a newborn son. It almost appeared as if the sun were setting in the west, and yet another sun was also rising in the north. They seemed to drift slowly, closer and closer towards this strangely glowing reddish sun. It seemed to light up the sky in all shades of the rainbow's colors. And then, suddenly... Olaf! Olaf! Look, Olaf! There's land inside. the sea Growing tall Coming closer to me Uncharted land Always so proud to be free Well I'm a seasick sailor Who'll never return to the sea What excitement Olaf and his father felt when almost as soon as they had sighted land, a strong wind began to blow. I told you we'd make it, my son. I told you. Did you ever see anything so beautiful, father? Look, look, look. As their sloop sailed closer to the land, the atmosphere changed. There seemed to be electricity in the air, and everything seemed to glow. Suddenly, they realized they were no longer in the ocean, but rather in the center of a very large river. On both sides of them were gigantic trees and vegetation. Mammoth elephants were watering in front of their disbelieving eyes. All at once they heard a great noise and saw an amazing sight. At tremendous speed coming toward them was the largest vessel they had ever seen. There were people, giants on it, and they were friendly. We have come in peace. Help us if you please. We have come so far from home. We've lost our way at sea. <laughs> <laughs> Give us the pleasure of your company We would like to help you come aboard Fear not, for we live in peace Everyone is your friend All here believe in the Lord My son, a dream so fulfilled There is a world without sea The greatest deeds of God are here Thus began a most unusual and enviable adventure. Jens and Olaf were welcomed into this astonishing world of giants by jewels, most revered of all the men. Appointed to entrust unto them secrets of the smoky god, he was to become their mentor 
introducing them to all manner of strange and wonderful things. You have entered the inner world throne of the smoking god. Birthplace of all men beneath the smoking god. Ever-present shield is night its darkness. Watching from the clouds to love. Side by side, in peace and harmony, Jens and Olaf came to know and love the people and their ways. Always above them, the great sun cast its rainbow colors on the inner earth, and in the evening hours, slowly and gloriously, a great silver electric cloud would form to entirely surround the sun in prisms of light. So it was, in this most splendid setting on such an evening, that Olaf met the beautiful Menta. Menta. Words could not explain. Menta. The most Your smile could melt the morning snow Your hair so black it glows And when I kiss your gentle face I never want to leave this place of men Could this be love? Could this be love? 
As the days passed, Jules continued to guide and teach his protégés, entrusting them with all of the secrets of the inner earth. Finally, the day came for their most incredible journey. They traveled by monorail across a desert land to a most high mountain. There, gleaming 200 stories high, stood an enormous glass and steel building, above which flying saucers appeared and vanished in incredible bursts of speed and light. Jens and Olaf were escorted inside by a Dr. Kite. Fly transportation is the occupation of this nuclear factory. Buckle up your suit, it's tailor-made for you. Protects you from radioactivity. This is Dr. Kite in charge of source of flight. The greatest scientist alive. He'll explain to you, incredible but true, how to fly so stiff and manage to survive. Dude, you're very nice. I would try to be concise. Stop me if you don't understand. We can travel fast with one sharp blast through the universe to other lands. We are the saucer, we are the saucer, we are the saucer man. We brought them up, we bring them down. We are the saucer, 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 we are Across the universe, we may be the first To explore any chart that you plot This machine tells us which planet compels us into its gravitational pull Then we chart the course, activate a field of force And travel supersonic speeds, it's wonderful! We are the saucer, we are the saucer, we are the saucer We are the saucer, we are the saucer Many secrets were made available to young Olaf by Menta, who was commissioned to instruct him in meditation and astral travel. Tonight's the time to dream along with me We must not let the night go by And we need so long for this moment where you so darling Close your eyes For the sun Is your love 100 million miles away Am I reaching for the moon For your love revolves around me every 
of the Garden of Eden. Their days of instruction are finished. They are now considered ready to meet the Most High. The gates open wide. Olaf and Jens enter the most beautiful temple they have ever seen. Rising high above them is the throne of the Most High. Come into the temple in the garden of Eden. The navel of the earth, birthplace of all.
Jens and Olaf are led into the Garden of Eden, where the four rivers of the world meet. Their sloop is being readied for the long journey home. Both Jens and Olaf are saddened at the thought of departure from their newfound friends and this wonderful Eden. Olaf's sorrow transforms him, and before his father's eyes, he astral travels to be at the side of his beloved mentor. You make me feel, you make me real, take each day. Nice and by without a sound. Now there's music whenever you're around. Cause you are the song that I hear. You make it sound so right. You are the song that I hear. You keep the harmony. Jens and his fishing sloop are also transformed and by astral projection reappear at the port where the two seamen had arrived so few months before. There, Menta and Olaf are saying goodbye. All of the giants and Eskimos have gathered as well to say their farewells. Change your mind and stay and stay. Or if you don't, so
so Olaf and Jens set sail. Rising high above them, and on all sides, were massive icebergs. With one fell swoop, a gigantic mass of ice collided with the small sloop, plunging broken pieces of the craft and gens into the depths of the ocean. of his father give Olaf the hope to keep struggling against the odds. Suddenly, a huge whaling ship comes into view. Olaf is rescued. He proceeds to tell his strange tale to the fishermen on board the ship. Invested everything. You're richer than a millionaire. Please go on and tell me. I want to know everything. My friends will write your tales. Then you can turn out my word. You can surely trust. Thank you, Uncle. Thank you for my father.
Olaf's uncle carried out an elaborate scheme to have him put away and declared insane. This hurts me for you. I don't know how much you never know. But I told the truth. It's for your own good. No. Meanwhile, no. I'll watch your savings grow. Olaf remained in the insane asylum for over 20 years. When his uncle died, he was released, and he swore never again to tell his incredulous story. He had kept that oath for many years, but now, for reasons of his own, he had chosen to share that story with me. And as I watched him, an old man setting sail all alone, braving an old enemy, the sea, I understood. Yeah. <laughs>